Tonight, uh, tuloy natin ang study natin sa Hebrews. I-share ko lang yung screen sa inyo. Um, last time, I think we've studied yung uh, uh, Hebrews 5, ano? And nakita natin doon yung uh, katuruan na ang ating high priest ay walang iba kundi ang ating panong Heso Kristo. And nakita natin yung background na pinapaliwanag ng sumulat ng Hebrews sa kanyang Jewish audience na naging tao ang Panginoong Hesus para mas maging uh, sympathetic siya, no? para maunawaan niya, maranasan niya lahat ng hirap, para nang sagayon ay siya yung ating mabuting kinatawan sa Diyos na banal. So nakita natin na bilang high priest, siya yung nagbigay ng access sa atin, siya nagbigay ng paraan upang tayo makadumog, uh, uh, makadulog, o oh, maka punta na makatungo sa uh, dulog sa presensya ng banal ng Diyos. It is through Christ that we can have access before a holy God. And only Christ Jesus is the mediator, the high priest between us and God. No? Siya yung ating kinatawan before a holy God. He is seated at the right hand, interceding for us. So nakita natin na walang iba, hindi ang, hindi ang San Pedro, hindi ang San Pablo, hindi ang Berhin Ria, walang iba, kundi ang Panginoon Jesus lamang ang siyang um, tanging daan para makadulog tayo sa ating dakilang Diyos Ama, Jesus being our High Priest. And then, yung uh, last verses ng chapter 5, uh, nakita natin doon na sinabi ng sumulat ng Hebrews sa chapter 5, na sabi niya, marami pa akong dapat na sabihin para sa inyo, sabi niya, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. No? Pinapoint out niya dito na Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa kayo nagmamature, sabi niya. No? And then sa verse 12 ng chapter 5, sabi niya, in fact, sabi niya, by, uh, though this time, by this time, sabi niya, dapat yung mga guru na kayo. No? Uh, kung totoosin, dapat sa panahong ito, mga, mga nagtuturo na kayo, sabi niya. Uh, kaya lang, hanggang ngayon, eh, kailangan niyo pa rin ng, uh, magtuturo sa inyo ng mga uh, basic, mga elementary truths of God's word all over again. Sabi niya, you need milk, not solid food. Sa so, sinasabi ng sumulat ng Hebrew sa kanyang audience, hanggang ngayon, gatas pa rin ang kinakain ninyo. Hindi niyo yung talagang solid food. And then sabi niya sa verse 13, anyone who lives on milk, uh, dahil infant pa rin siya, hindi siya acquainted, hindi niya alam yung mga teachings about righteousness, no? yung about righteousness in Christ, yung talagang mature teachings. no But solid food, sabi niya sa verse 14, solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So, pagka uh, infant ka, syempre, uh, sinasabi ng Hebrews dito na pag infant, hindi mo pa rin alam ang uh, mga bagay patungkol sa uh, katuwiran. No? Pero yung solid food, sabi niya, eh, para sa mga mature ito, na pagka laging uh, ginagamit, eh, alam na nila kung ano yung tama sa mali, mabuti, sa uh, masama. No? Uh, pinapoint out dito yung yung kanyang siguro eh, assessment sa kanyang audience na mga ano pa kayo mga infant pa rin kayo hindi na kayo nagmamature no? kaya pagdating sa verse 6 as chapter 6 I mean pagdating sa chapter 6 basahin ko lang yung verses 1 to 3 no sabi niya dito sa chapter 6 ng Hebrews verses 1 to 3 sabi niya therefore let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. Instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. I I iwan muna natin yung, anong, ano, yung verses 4 and the uh, downwards. No? Tignan lang muna natin yung first three verses dito, yung paragraph na ito. Dahil pinapoint out niya, kasi sabi lang niya sa, verse, sa chapter 5, verses 11 to 14, kasi sabi lang niya na, ito mga bata pa kayo, hanggang ngayon, gatas pa rin kinakain niya, dapat solid food na. No? Um, hanggang ngayon, eh, uh, kinakalang niyo pa ng isang tao magtuturo sa inyo, dapat mga, tu mga guru na kayo, eh. dapat kayo na nagtuturo. Eh. Hanggang ngayon, eh, Kailangan nyo pa rin na isang magtuturo sa inyo ng mga uh, basic things. And then ang sabi niya, kinakailangan na natin oh, ano, mag-mature. Let us move beyond, no? uh, beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. Now, ano yung mga elementary teachings about Christ? 
No? Ano yung mga elementary teaching sa what Christ na binabanggit dito ang sumulat ng Hebrews? Kung titignan mo rito, um, hindi niya sinasabing iwanan na natin, hindi niya sinasabing kaligtaan na natin yung mga basic teachings o yung elementary teachings about Christ. Hindi niya sinasabing iiwanan natin yan. But rather sinasabi niya, yan ang foundation natin. Once yan ang foundation mo, huwag kang dapat ma-stuck doon sa naituro sa sa foundation mo but move forward. Meaning, ang call dito is for us to mature. Yung, nga, yung maturity or growth in our knowledge of who the Lord is. Kaya ang sabi niya rito, yung elementary teachings na foundation ng ating teaching, ng ating uh, uh, knowledge about Christ, ano yung elementary teachings na yun? Binanggit niya dito yung repentance from uh, sin. No? Repentance from acts that lead to death. Ito yung mga sins nga. No? Repentance and faith in God. So sabi niya rito, ito yung mga elementary teachings. Eh. Ano, yung mga ano yung mga elementary teachings na yan? Repentance and faith in God. And ano pa yan? Ito yung tinatawag natin um, <coughs> laying on of hands. And then binanggit niya dito yung um, <coughs> resurrection and eternal judgment. No? So, uh, anin yun eh? Anin yung binanggit niya doon eh? Yung uh, repentance, faith in God, baptism or cleansing, laying on of hands, uh, resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Yung anin na yun, pinapoint out niya na ito yung elementary teachings about Christ. Bakit elementary teachings? Kasi hindi ka magkakaroon ng um, pagsisisi sa kasalanan hanggat hindi mo tinatanggap yung katotohanan na ang kapatawaran mo ay nakay Kristo lamang. No? Hindi ka pwede magsisisi sa kasalanan mo and yet nagsisisi ka tapos sinusubukan mong bayar na kasalanan mo sa pamagitan ng panata. Eh, hindi ganun. Hindi ka pwede magkaroon ng repentance and yet eh, dumudulog ka sa ibang paraan para makakuha ng kapatawaran. No? Yung elementary teachings about Christ is that we repent from our sins knowing for a fact na ang forgiveness, kapatawaran ng kasalanan, eh, makakamit lamang sa ating pagtitiwala kay Kristo Yesus dahil si Kristo Yesus ang siyang napako sa krus na matay, muli na buhay dahil uh, kinakailangan niyang talunin ang kamatayan at ang kasalanan at dahil sa kanyang ginawa ay merong kapatawaran sa mga nagtitiwala sa kanya. No? Yun ang, yun ang elementary teachings about Christ, repentance. Sabi nga ko nga, hindi ka pwede magsisi and yet subukan mong bayaran ng kasalanan sa pamabagitan ng iyong panata o ng iyong uh, mga sariling gawa. And that is not repentance taught by Christ. Repentance is turning away from sins and turning to Christ for forgiveness. And then yung faith in God. Again, yung faith in God mo yun is yung uh, trusting and knowing that God is uh, the one who has been revealed to us by Jesus Christ. No? Faith in God re as revealed to us by Christ. Instruction about cleansing rites or baptism. Baptism dito could be identified as yung uh, being one with Christ or being cleansed by Christ because we have been baptized in Christ, meaning identified na tayo kay Christ. Uh, and therefore, dahil identified na tayo kay Christ, we are one with Christ. No? And laying on of hands, uh, it's about anointing, being anointed by the Spirit. It talks about the baptism of the Spirit, hindi yung, hindi yung uh, baptism of speaking in tongues, but rather baptism in the Spirit, meaning we have been cleansed within us and we have been made one with the Lord through our baptism in the Spirit. No? And then resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment, talks about, of course, yung um, end times. No? Ano end times na yun? that we will be resurrected with the Lord. No? Ibig sabihin, mariresurrect tayo and we will be with the Lord. Um, mali yata yung gawin ko ng English doon. We will be resurrected to be with the Lord. Yeah, because the Lord Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father. He has resurrected on the third day of His death. And then uh, tayo naman, darating panahon na we will be resurrected again when the day comes. And of course, sa mga hindi nagtitiwala sa Kanya, there will be eternal judgment to those who do not trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So kung makikita natin dito na sinasabi ng sumulat ng Hebrews na ituloy natin yung pag-move natin towards maturity, hindi yung sinabi iwawaksi, but rather leaving behind, meaning alam na natin ang foundation natin. We know yung foundation ng Christianity, which is ayun nga, um, repentance and faith, instruction about baptisms and cleansing or identification with Christ, laying on the hands, the anointing of the Spirit and resurrection and eternal judgment. Ang sabi natin, 
um, ito yung mga elementary teachings of uh, about Christ, no? Elementary teachings about Christ. Let's move forward dahil hindi lang hindi lang 'yan ang dapat nating pinag-aaralan dahil alam na natin 'yan eh, ng foundation natin eh. That is the foundation of our continuous growth and maturity in Christ. Kasi sabi niya, let us move forward following yung uh, language ng Hebrews. Therefore, let us move beyond. Ibig sabihin eh, uh, higitan, higitan na natin yung ating pag-aaral pa no? about the elementary teachings of Christ. Let's move forward to maturity. And then sabi niya, God permitting, we will do so. And dito yung realization, it is God who allows us to mature. Sabi sa verse 3, no? and God permitting, we will do so. And doon yung kanyang confidence na it is by God's grace, by God's mercy, that tayo, we will actually mature. Remember, maturity natin is um, because of the Spirit working in us, we continue to have that desire to know more about God, moving beyond what was taught to us, moving beyond what has been um, imparted to us, what has been given to us. Ito nga yung about you know, repentance, uh, faith in God, uh, cleansing or identification with Christ, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. So, ang call dito is that we should move forward to maturity. So, of course, dapat solid food yung kinakain natin. Hindi tayo dapat nag stick lang sa, sa elementary teachings. Otherwise, we will never grow. No? If we continue to just focus on the elementary teachings, we will never mature. No? And sabi nga nun, dapat eh, solid food na yung kinakain natin. No? That is a call towards maturity. Now, pag tuunan natin ng pansin, yung binanggit doon sa verses 4 to 6, that's, that this is more of a warning. No? This is more of a warning uh, given by the author of Hebrews. Ang sabi niya, sa verse 4, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance, to the lost they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. So there is a warning dito na sinulat ng Hebrews. Remember yung context niya, Sabi niya ito, mga sanggol pa kayo, hindi na kayo mature. Dapat solid food ang hinakain niyo. Kaya dapat tayo mag-mature tayo. Let us move on towards maturity. And God permitting, we will actually mature. And then sabi niya kasi, imposible uh, doon sa mga taong nakaranas ng uh, grasya ng Diyos at uh, matapos makaranas ng grasya ng Diyos, eh, tumalikod sila. Yeah, they have fallen away. O tumalikod sila o bumagsak sila. Uh, imposible yung sila yung muli nang mag, magsisi pa muli no? dahil kanilang uh, iniinsulto muli ang uh, Panginoon Heso Kristo. That is how we can rephrase verses 4 to 6. Now, sabi natin, we have to understand na maunawaan natin dapat what the Bible teaches. What the Bible teaches is that if you are in Christ, talagang you are secured in Christ. No? Ang ating security is in Christ if you have your trust in Christ, it is God who is at work in you. He is faithful. He who began a good work in you, He will. He is faithful and He will bring it to completion. No? Tayong mga nagtitiwala kay Kristo Jesus, sabi niya na He will raise us up until the last day. So the overall teaching of Scripture is that your eternal security more is in Christ, not in your own self. No? So those who are Truly in Christ, those who are genuinely in Christ, it is impossible for them to what? To fall away. Why? Because that is the promise of God. Sabi ng Panginoon, Diyos, ng Panginoon Jesus, no one can pluck them out of my Father's hand. So you know, overall teaching is scripture. No? Uh, kaya na sinabi ni Pablo, even uh, si, si Jude sa kanyang um, doxology is talagang it is Christ, who, it is God who will keep us from falling. No? It is God who is uh, praise be to God who will keep us from falling. Ang ating security is in Christ. It is in God. He has sealed us. In-adopt niya tayo. We are now children of God. Wala na makatanggal nun sa atin. 
no? Wala na mahatanggal ng uh, ng iyong position as a child of God. Now, in verse 4 to 6, yung warning dito ng Hebrews does not talk about una it does not talk about falling into sin because all genuine Christians still commit sin, no? Otherwise, kung may genuine Christian na makapagsasabing perfect na siya at hindi na siya nagkasala, then um, um, parang sinasabi niya, baliwala yung death ni Christ sa cross. So, verses 4 to 6 does not talk about committing sin or falling into sin. Because we still sin as Christians. Yung verse 4, 5, and 6 ng Hebrews chapter 6, uh, clearly pinapoint out nito yung taong identified okay identified with the christians identified with the christians but it's not identified with the christians because he has uh, been enlightened once and enlightened once then paliliwanag ko mamaya yan nakaranas siya ng heavenly gift no nakibahagi siya ng banal na espiritu nakaranas siya ng kabutihan ng salita ng diyos at ng kapangyarihan ng coming age no despite having experienced all this naranasan niya lahat ito and yet nagfall away pa rin siya hindi mo na siya muli mapagsisisi pa why kasi that is a rejection of Christ he has tasted the heavenly gift he has experienced everything and yet he has fallen away meaning tumalikod siya he has rejected it then hindi mo na siya talaga totally mapagsisisi pa why because he is totally rejecting it that's the point of Hebrews 4, 5, and 6. Kaya ang sabi doon sa uh, verse 6, to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Christ to public disgrace. No? Parang nang nang insulto kung baga, iniinsulto nila yung ginawa ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Now, makikita natin sa verse 4 na it is impossible simula, uh, simula pa lang, eh, pinagdiinan niya yung salitang imposible. No? Imposible para sa mga mul, para sa mga uh, nakaranas ng enlightenment <laughs> o di kaya ito yung, yung uh, kanilang exposure to the gospel no? o di kaya they were instructed of, uh, uh, of uh, the Christian doctrine no? nakaranas sila ng uh, something unusual, they have tasted they have experienced something, they become joyful, nakaranas sila no? ng heavenly gift no? naging partakers sila no? na partakers sila Meaning, nakibahagi nga sila, uh, nakasama sila doon sa mga nakaranas ng heavenly gift. No? They have tasted, nakaranas sila ng goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age. Pag sinabi natin tasted, that means to say naranasan nila, no? na-experience nila. Natikman means naranasan. Remember yung teaching na Christ tasted death for everyone, meaning He experienced death for everyone. It's the same word na ginamit dito that the one who has fallen away has tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age. Sa ibang version, ginamit yung word na if they fall away. Hindi ko lang kung ng version yun. Pero sa ibang version, nakalagi doon, if they fall away. But apparently, uh, sa uh, translations from, from Greek, kumbaga, no? from Greek into um, the English, and dapat nabasa doon is, uh, those who have been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, it is impossible for those who have been enlightened, those who have tasted the heavenly gift, uh, who have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of, the God's, of God's word and the powers of the coming age, and they have fallen away. Meaning, it is, yung kanilang pag fall away is an, uh, a consequence of them experiencing, no? experiencing, uh, yung, yung enlightenment, tasting the, the heavenly gift, become partakers of the Holy Spirit, etc. No? That is a consequence of having experienced all this. Naranas na lahat ng bagay na yan, and, and yet they have fallen away, meaning they have rejected. No? Pag sinabi mo, they have fallen away, they have rejected, anong, anong ibig sabihin nun? Ang consequence nun is they're pretty much subjecting Christ to public disgrace again, which sabi nga natin clearly shows that they are rejecting Christ. And because they are rejecting Christ, anong effect nun? Of course, it is impossible for them to bring back to repentance. Why? Kasi nga, they have rejected despite having experienced those heavenly uh, gifts. <coughs> despite having experienced or tasted the goodness of God. 
Kaya nga sinasabi natin na those who have fallen away, meaning those who have rejected it, cannot be brought back again to a true repentance. Kaya sabi natin, dapat yung verses 4 to 6 na Hebrews chapter 6, it, it has to be read uh, ayon sa buong konteksto no? ng aklat ng Hebrews. Dahil uh, kung titignan natin, yung uh, uh, aklat ng Hebrews, eh, pinapoint out dito na ang mga nakay Kristo, eh, talagang they will persevere. As we will study later on sa succeeding chapters, ang context talaga na niyan is for those who are in Christ, they will actually persevere. No? Perseverance is a, a proof, kumbaga, it is a proof or demonstration that you are actually in Christ. Nung sinabi ng uh, Hebrews 6 na imposible sa mga taong ito na namar- matawas nila maranasan ang uh, kabutihan ng Diyos, imposible yung maibalik mo sila sa pagsisisimuli, kinakailangan natin maintindihan ng repentance. Sabi ko nga kanina, ang pagsisisi sa kasalanan ay eh dahil sa katotohanan na hindi mo kaya yung bayaran ng kasalanan mo, kinakailangan mong talikuran. Repentance means tatalikuran mo. Diba? Tatalikuran mo yung kasalanan mo and eventually magtitiwala ka kay Jesus bilang siyang tagapagligtas at uh, paraan upang ikaw ay makatanggap ng kapatawaran. For those who have experienced God's goodness, nakaranas sila ng enlightenment. No? Nakaranas sila ng enlightenment. Naranasan na, nakaranas sila ng, ng enlightenment na ang forgiveness of sins through Jesus only. And then later on, after having experienced that enlightenment, if they turn away from that, meaning they reject it again, they now reject it, hindi na nalit na natanggap yung katotohanan na forgiveness is through Jesus Christ alone, wala na. Talaga, imposible mo na talaga silang maibalik pa towards repentance kasi nga they are rejecting the truth and the fact that forgiveness is only through Jesus Christ. No? Kasi nga sabi natin, once that person has rejected Christ, hindi niyo na kinikilala na ang kanyang patawaran at ang uh, kaligtasan ay makakamit lamang kay Kristo Jesus. Kasi anong nangyari doon? Pagka uh, ganun ang ginagawa nila, eh, nga, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. It is a metaphor indicating that they are insulting Christ. No, It's an insult to Christ. Kaya nga, very clearly, repentance is impossible because the fallen ones, eh, they are now rejecting Christ. Kasi remember, in crucifixion, ng panahon ng Panginoong Jesus, di ba? crucifixion was uh, a way of uh, publicly shaming the criminal. No, Ang crucifixion sa cross, eh, yun ang capital punishment eh, para sa kalaban ng Rome. No? So they want to set an example na pag ikaw kinakalaban mo ang Rome, ito ang kaparusahan mo. Talagang kinu-crucify ka sa, sa wooden cross. That is, a pub, that, that is one way of publicly shaming um, those who are opposed to the Roman Empire back then. And here is Jesus, uh, having been shamed publicly by his crucifixion, have, having been scorned. Ito, eh, sinasabi nila na if you reject Christ, no, in effect, you are you know, um, identifying to be with those who have ridiculed the Lord when he was being crucified on the cross. Tayong mga Christians, we identify with Christ. The, the, the world is shaming Christ, yet we identify with self with Christ, and therefore we experience that shame that uh, is uh, attributed towards Christ. No, pero yung mga those who reject Christ, they are the ones who are, you know, again shaming and publicly shaming, uh, ridiculing the Lord Jesus Christ. The point is this: yung nakaranas ng kabutihan ng Dios, yung na imulat ang kaisipan kung baga, no. Hindi nito tinutukoy yung tunay na mga Kristiyano. They are those instead who identify themselves with Christ o di kaya mga confessors. They confess to be Christians but in reality, madidiscover na hindi pala talaga sila genuinely uh, believers or trusting or followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bakit? Again, you read the scripture in its entire context. Sa 2 uh, John chapter 2 verse 19, sabi nga nung John, ni, ni John ano, na uh, kasa, dati nasa iglesia sila pero umalis sila sa iglesia, mali ang kanilang tinuturo. Bakit? Kasi from the very start, they do not belong with us. They were not with us. So ganun din ang, ang Hebrews uh, 6. It refers to one na 
who profess to be a Christian or identify themselves to be with Christ, but after experiencing all this goodness, they reject Christ, meaning hindi pala talaga sila genuinely in Christ. Iti mga tinatawag nga na those who, well, they don't call them backsliders dahil hindi talaga yung pinapoint niya, but rather those who are really rejecting Christ, these are you know, apostates sa tawag na ibang mga scholars dyan, ng ibang mga theologians, but in in plain language, ito yung mga hindi tunay na Kristiyano, but claim to be Christians, and later on, eh, after experiencing it, they renounce the faith. They abandon the faith. They renounce the faith. And we have, uh, no, we have examples of that. Um, let me just show you. No? Let me show you an example. See Joshua Eugene Harris. No? Uh, I'm not going to make a judgment that he is an apostate, but let me just show you what happened to him. To him no? And simply history will judge kung, kung genuine Christian ba siya o hindi. Si, uh, Joshua, uh, si Joshua Harris uh, is a young, uh, pastor, lead pastor ng Covenant Life Church. Kung alam ninyo yung Sovereign Grace Ministries, si marami silang magagandang kanta. Um, Doon galing Sovereign Grace Ministries, yung Covenant Life Church. Dating pastor si Joshua Harris Don. And later on, in 2019, sabi niya, I am no longer a Christian. No? And he has abandoned the faith. And yung kanyang author, yung kanyang sinulat na libro, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, talks about the purity before marriage and everything. Sinabi niya, hindi totoo yan and tinigil yung publication ng book niyan, and publicly he said, I am no longer a Christian. Pastor for 11 years, kundi ko nagkakamali. No? Been a pastor for 11 years, and yet you know, uh, given up the faith. So he wa was once enlightened, experienced uh, the goodness of God, partakers of a heavenly gift, and yet ito, uh, abandoned his, uh, yeah, abandoned faith. Abandoned faith saying, I do no longer believe in Christ. Another example would be Marty Sampson, yung uh, sumulat ng katang, Oh, praise the name of the Lord, my God, uh, songwriter ng Hillsong. Again, in 2019, he also said, I am no longer a Christian. I wish that there is truth without Jesus. Yun ang kanyang uh, sinabi way back in 2019. No? And he's been with, with Hillsong for how many years? No? But anyway, that's just an example, no? An example of someone who has tasted the goodness of God uh, and yet you know, medyo, uh, have fallen away. No? Mm -hmm. Is it impossible to bring them back to repentance if they, are, if they have totally rejected Christ? The guy in the Marty Samson, uh, there is truth without Jesus. That's an open public rejection of Christ. No? And at the end of the day, sabi nga natin, Ang conversion ng tao is by the Spirit of God. Kilos ng Spirit ng Diyos ang conversion ng tao. No? And for those who reject Christ, clearly shows that they have not truly really experienced the, um, the uh, spiritual awakening. Kumbaga, they haven't truly really experienced the genuineness of conversion no? by the Spirit of God. They have experienced it, but they not truly really uh, they have experienced the enlightenment. They have experienced the, the taste. The, they have tasted. Uh, they have uh, tasted the goodness of God. Pero hindi pala talaga genuinely in Christ. Why? Because those who are in Christ will genuine will persevere. Those who are genuinely in Christ will persevere. Mahikita mo yan later on sa verses seven to eight ng chapter six. No. So. Basahin natin yung, ano, yung uh, verses uh, 7 to 8 ng uh, <clears throat> chapter 6. So kasasabi lang niya sa so verses 4 to 6 na you know, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened to be brought back to repentance because they are again shaming Christ. And then yung verse 7 and 8, maliwanag yung kind of explanation. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it, for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. So that is how he explained yung kanyang warning. No? Yung warning niya na impossible magsisimuli itong mga nakaranas ng kabutihan ng Diyos. 
uh, dahil kanilang uh, binabasas muli ang, ang Panginoon. No? And then ang kanyang paliwanag dito is this, na <clears throat> parang lupa, parang lupa sabi niya, no? uh, lupa yan eh. Pag umulan, di ba pag umulan ay siyempre ang lupa nababasa. No? So nabasa yung lupa dahil umulan. Metaphor yan. It's a metaphor na the rain speaks of the goodness of God. And nabasa ang lupa. Siyempre na nabasa ng ulan. May mga lupang nagbunga. Na nagbunga, nagkaroon ng magandang bunga na inaasahan ng nagtanim. So eventually, sabi niya, they... Uh, it, this will be a blessing of God. They will receive. Itong land that produces fruit, they will receive the blessing of God. You see, Psalm 7, verse 7. So land that drinks rain from above, that produces good crop, expected by the harvester, will receive blessing from God. So meaning to say, pag naharunin ka ng Sultanan Diyos at nagbunga ka, then you will receive God's blessing. No? On the other hand, yung lupa na naharan, nakatanggap ng ulan, Pero ang kanyang ibinunga ay mga tinik and weeds, no? thorns and thistles. Talks about, of course, ang mga walang silbing bagay. No? Yung thorns and thistles, kung titignan mo, uh, na-create lang yan after the fall. Kung babalik kami in Genesis, uh, as part of man's curse, sinabi ng Diyos kay Adam na dahil sa kasalanan, eh, pag maghihirap ka, magbubungkal ka para mabuhay, at yung lupa, itutubo yan ng thistles. So that was the time thorns and thistles were uh, created after man's fall. May kita yung Genesis. And ito ngayon sinabi ng Hebrews, na yung lupa na nakatanggap ng ulan, ng tubig, pag ang binubunga lang yan ay thorns and thistles, meaning walang silbing mga bagay, eh, ito ay magkaroon ng sumpa. Uh, it will be burned, no? It will be burned and they will not receive the blessing of God. Again, it reminds us of the parable of the sower sa Matthew 13, di ba? Uh, na napag-aralan natin noon na uh, uh, yung seeds that fell on thorny uh, path, nagbunga sila, uh, nag tumubo yung seed. Seed refers to the word of God. Nag uh, tumubo, pero dahil nga sa walang enough uh, ground para tubuan ng ugat, eh, wala. <clears throat> Nawala rin. No? Hindi rin uh, nagbunga, kumbaga, yung mga seed doon. So it's it's something sim very similar sa binabanggit dito ng Hebrews. No? So, yung lupa na nagbunga ng thorns and thistles, eto, kung hindi pa natin alam mga thorns and thistles, weeds yan eh. Diba? Isang weed yan. Nakikita mo yun dito sa Australia, madaming ganyan. No? Mga weeds. O kahit sa Pilipinas, may mga weeds kang makikita. Dahil walang silbi ang ganyang binubunga ng lupa na yan, it will reserve uh, God's uh, curse. Eventually, susunugin din yan, sabi nga. No? Susunugin. Hindi lang yung mga bunga, kundi yung lupa itself no? will be burned as part of God's curse. Kasi nga, eh, uh, walang silbi. No? Remember, who is the the farmer in the parable of the sower? It is God. No, who cultivates the soul? It is God. No, it is God who cultivates the soil. So yun ang thorns and thistles walang silbi yan. That is how it is uh, explained. It is verses seven and eight ng Hebrews. You see, those who so have tasted the heavenly gift, it is impossible for them to be brought back to repentance. It simply shows that yung pagigi matatag perseverance is the evidence of the genuineness of a believer. Kasi may kita mo sa verse 7 and 8, ang ulan, eh, parehong bumubuho sa maganda at masamang lupa. No? Magandang lupa, ito yung tumutubo ng magandang bunga na ginagamit ng mag-aani. Yung uh, masamang lupa, walang binubunga kundi thorns and thistles lang. No? So those who uh, bear fruit, this is uh, referring to confessing Christians who have uh, who bear fruit who truly believe and who uh, who truly put their trust in the lord no um, it is what the soil produce no ko ano yung bunga you don't mo makikita kung talagang tunay nga itong kristiyano hindi hindi yung confession it's not the confession but rather it is the fruit no makikita mo sa parable of the sower makikita mo yan dito sa hebrews Chapter 6, verses 7 to 8. No wonder sinabi ng Panginoon sa Matthew 7, 21. Diba? Not every one of you who says, Lord, Lord, will what? Uh, enter the kingdom of God. And on that day, many of you will say, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Lord, did we not 
perform miracles in your name. I tell you the truth, sabi ng Pano Jesus, depart from me, you evil doers. It's not those who identify, it's not those who confess that they are in Christ, but rather those who bear fruit indeed are those who are genuinely in Christ. No? Uh, marami lahat na karinig, marami, marami sa mga nag-fall away, they have, sabi nga natin, heard the gospel, they have been instructed of the gospel, they have even publicly uh, confessed their faith, but at the end of the day, over time, no, it is uh, time that will uh, show us whether they are genuine believers or not by their perseverance, by their fruit. No? Kung babalik kami in John chapter 15, sa vine and the branches, di ba sabi doon ng Panginoon Jesus, I am the vine and you are the uh, branches. No? Uh, the Father of course, of course is uh, the, the divine keeper. No? Pero makikita mo doon na sinasabi niya na yung branch that do not bear fruit, tinatanggal na, cut off and it is being burned. It is again a metaphor. Metaphor for those who say they are in Christ. They identify themselves to be with Christ, but they do not bear fruit. Ano yung fruit na yun? The fruit of knowing God and the fruit of loving. May kita mo yun sa John chapter 15 eh. Siguro maganda one time we will study yung uh, the true vine no? sa John chapter 15 because yung fruit na, na tinutukoy doon refers to knowing God and loving God and loving one another. Without that fruit, yun nga, <clears throat> talagang... Uh, kinakat off yung branch that do not have that fruit. No? It does not talk about witnessing. It doesn't talk about multiplying. No? But it talks about knowing God and loving God in one another. That's the context of John 15. So ganun din sinasabi doon. Yung branch that do not bear fruit, it is being cut off. Pag sinabing branch, they, they kinakat off kasi they say they are with Christ. They attached to the vine. They say they are with Christ, but they do not bear fruit. It is being cut off. The same is true with, with Hebrews 6, 1, uh, chapter 6, verses uh, 4 to uh, 6. Nung sinasabi nga na uh, they have tasted the heavenly gift, but at the end of the day, uh, they still reject Christ. It's impossible to really bring them back to repentance. Why? Because they have rejected Christ. They um, are crucifying Christ. They are ridiculing Christ all over again by their, um, you know, by their rejection of Christ. So yun, yun, yun ang context ng, ng Hebrews um, chapter 6. It's about uh, people na who profess to be Christians, but at the end of the day, they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, maraming, ano, it, it is a hard, it's a hard parang, uh, passage in scripture na other scholars have a different kind of interpretation. Other scholars interpret that as those who are genuine Christians but they just do not uh, bear fruit. It's uh, they do not experience the blessing of God. But they're still Christians, no? So that takes uh, that is totally different from the context of Hebrews six. Because sabi lang niya, let's move on to maturity. God willing, we will do so. Kaya nga sinabi niya na impossible na magsisimuli yung mga nagreject kay Christ. Pagdating sa verse nine, sinabi niya sa verse nine. But you, my brothers, notice, sa binalikan niya yung mga, yung mga uh, kapatid niya, yung mga tunay Christians. Even though we speak like this, sabi niya, dear friends, we are convinced of better things for you. No? The things that have to do with salvation. So, ina-assure niya yung mga readers niya na kayo, you're genuine Christians, yes. Um, bagamat sinasabi ko ito, mga bagay na ito, I am convinced, sabi niya, that uh, we are convinced of better things in your case, referring to the genuine Christians in, in Hebrews. No? So that's that's the context there. It's, it's more of a warning for those who profess to be Christians, but actually later on by their rejection of Christ, it only shows that they haven't really been one with us. Hindi talaga sila tunay na mananapatataya tulad nga ng binanggit ni John sa 1 John chapter 2 verse 19 so um again th that is something that others uh, find it difficult to really uh, agree with but if you really go go to the context it is in ni christ let me just get my bible now you since sabi ni ni christ then sa you know Matthew 7:19 that is really very um uh, Matthew, Matthew 7 21 no? very uh, the same not all of you who says Lord Lord will 
uh, enter the kingdom of God. Ganon din sa John chapter 59. Nung sinabi niya na, I'm the vine and you are the branches. No? He's referring to, he's addressing the crowd. Pag sinabi, um, I am the vine. Sabi niya, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. No? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it's a metaphor. Bakit? Because there are people who identify themselves to be with Christ, but actually do not bear fruit. That is, they're being taken away. And then so verse 6, sabi niya doon, If anyone does not abide in me, she is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. It refers to those who confess to be followers of Christ, but they do not bear fruit. Sabi natin, in bearing fruit doon, it's not about... You know, you multiplying the number of believers. That is not the context there, but the context there is about loving and knowing God. No, loving and knowing God. That's the fruit. If you claim to be with Christ, kaharam ka ng bunga that you know who God is, who is God, the God that's revealed to us by Christ, and because uh, the true God has been revealed to us, we love. Um, the children of God. We love one another. We love God. We love Jesus. We love. The brethren, we love the brothers and sisters. Why? Because that is the mark of a true disciple. Remember, sir, John 13, binagit niya, this is how the world will know that you are my disciples. That is, you have love for one another. Binagit niya in uh, John chapter 13. No? <clears throat> so it's it's all about you know, being with with Christ means talagang yung bunga mo na you're persevering because it is God who is sustaining you in Christ. It is not your own strength. No. Okay, ano sinabi ni Christ in John chapter 15? Apart from me, you can do nothing. It's about bearing fruit. No. It's about bearing fruit in terms of you know, knowing who God is, loving God and loving our, loving the brethren. Uh, you cannot love apart from Jesus. No. Yun ang ginawa ni, ni Marty Samson at ni Josh Harris. Na sabi nila, ah, the most important thing is love, love, love. You cannot love apart from Christ. Because if you love apart from Christ, it's more of self-love. It's not genuine love. So yun, yun ang Hebrews chapter 6 in, in relation to you know, <clears throat> the teaching about um, fallen, uh, falling away. He is Lord.